Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, I'm going to show you how to play St. James Infirmary. Now, this is straying from what I normally do. Usually, I write my own compositions, but I found out recently that St. James Infirmary is in the public domain, so there's no copyright uh, to worry about with this. And it's just a classic song. It's a beautiful song uh, that I wanted to create a standalone composition, something that works on guitar that doesn't require any accompaniment. So I'm going to break down everything that I played in the intro note for note and show you how to do that, but I'm also going to talk through my thought process for creating a composition like that so that you can start to do that uh, on your own. So I've got this lesson split into two parts. In this video, we'll take a look at the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half and get the tablature for this lesson, you can get that by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP261. All right, so before I did this composition, I decided to immerse myself in all the different versions that I could find of St. James Infirmary. I'm familiar with the song. It's just a great song lyrically and musically. Um, and I thought it would be a really cool uh, standalone composition like this. But it was really hard because there's a lot of different uh, versions of it. There's a lot of inconsistency with this song, both lyrically and uh, from a chord perspective, chord structure perspective. Uh, it's just been done a lot of different ways. Different keys, you know, it's just sort of like almost a free-for-all when it comes to that song. But the one consistent part is that it's always done in a minor key. And so I based my version loosely on uh, the Louis Armstrong version. Uh, I listened to Cab Calloway, I listened to Doc, Doc Watson, and I borrowed little parts of those songs, but I based the chord structure on the Louis Armstrong version. Now he did his in D minor, I think it was D minor, and I'm doing mine in A minor, but... Anyway, so that's uh, sort of the setup there. Now the way that I started the song was with my own little setup. I did a chord arrangement first and then went into the melody. So I started with... And that's just to set it up. Now I tried doing it the other way. Originally I was just starting right into the melody and it was too... Uh, too abrupt. You didn't have a point of reference, and so I kind of figured that out, that it, it needed something, and so I came up with just a little playthrough of the chords there. Now let me uh, talk through that, and, uh, and then we'll get into the, the melody part, but the way that I'm playing these chords, and these are all downstrokes with the right hand, by the way. It's just down, down, and you don't let them ring out. It's not like that. You, you truncate them. You let this part of your hand hit the string each time. So it sounds like that. So it starts with an A minor chord, and then it goes to an E7 chord. And it's a cool technique, a little takeaway for you. If you're wanting to write a composition that has kind of that eerie, spooky sound, go from the minor 1 chord to the major 5 chord, back and forth between those two chords. It creates a really cool tension. So we have A minor, E7, and then I go back to the A minor. But this time, I put my pinky down on the 2nd fret, uh, first string to create an E, or I'm sorry, an A6 chord, A minor 6 chord, sorry. So it's an A minor 6 chord, and I got that from Doc Watson's version. If you listen to the way that he plays that, every time he's on the 1 chord, he plays this weird kind of minor 6 chord. And that's, uh, uh, that's how you do that. So, we have... And then I played this. So that's an F7 and an E7. And the way that I'm playing that F7 there, and I apologize for this guitar because I don't have fret markers on it. I know that frustrates people, and I'm sure I'll see it in the comments. But uh, I'll try and work around that and call it out. Uh, if, you if you play a C chord down in first position, you know how to play a C. You just slide that all the way up. So now, that, now your ring finger is up here, and this is the 8th fret. So ring finger's on the 8th fret, and then you put your pinky down on the 8th fret 3rd string play those middle four strings. That's an F7 chord. That's how you make a 7 chord. A real easy way to make it. And then you slide that down one fret, and that's an E7. So now we're playing an E7 down here, and we're playing one up here as well. So we have... And then back to the A minor. And then there's your turnaround chord, which is the E7. And by the way, to make this E7, you just make an E chord and you add your pinky here on the 3rd fret, 2nd string, if you didn't know. Okay, now we go into the melody, and the way that I played that... We're going to learn that first. 
Now, the way that I wrote, it, or didn't write it, but composed it, I guess, was to pick out the melody on its own. Uh, no chords, nothing, just single strings. So it sounded like that, very simple. The kind of thing you could do on a piano with just one finger. And then I worked the chords around that. And I chose the key, you always have to pick the key first if you're wanting to write a composition like this, and obviously you could do it in any key, but I always try and find those keys that have those open strings. And so I settled on the A the key of A minor because it allowed me to play. Hear that? For that, uh, for that very first part, it kicks it off with a nice punch, and I'm taking advantage of that open E string, the one string. So the way that I play that, uh, you can use, I'm, I think I'm using my middle finger for that, but it's, this is the fourth fret, second string, and I slide up to the fifth fret, second string. But I'm also hitting the open one string with that, the E string, so you have real big full sound. It makes that single string thing, it just sort of amplifies it. And then I come down and hit the open fifth string, and then I hit the A minor chord. That's another advantage, or you're seeing the advantage, I guess, of the open string by open, and because it's open, those notes can ring out, allowing me to take my hand off the fretboard and reposition it back to this A minor chord. So. Now, the next thing that I play goes like this. So that's just the E7 chord again, but I start with the low E string, or the 6th string. And then my middle finger, I use my middle finger and I slide from the 2nd fret up to the 5th fret on the 3rd string. This may be the hardest part in the whole thing. You just want to make sure you're accurate with it. Then we come back to the 2nd fret on the 3rd string. And then you hit the open 5th string, so you have... And then I do an upstroke on the 4th string, which is on the, behind the 2nd fret. You can see these two fingers here are pushing down on uh, strings 3 and 4, fret 2. So you have... It's an upstroke with the right hand on that note. Alright, so let me back up from here. And then notice I played another A minor chord after that. that was another upstroke. So, and then I came up here and played. And all I'm doing for that is I'm playing, so this was an A minor chord, I'm just coming up here and playing an A minor chord in this position. So we're barring, this is the fifth fret right here, and then I've got my middle finger, or I'm sorry, my ring finger, my pinky, on the seventh fret, strings five and four. It's an A minor. So I brush the chord and then I hit the second string. So pinky comes off. I keep the bar there. So my pinky goes to the eighth fret third string so that I can hit that note with a downstroke and then do an upstroke on the second string again, which is behind the bar here on the fifth fret. So we have. And then the D minor chord. So at this point, I'm just keeping the bar there, and now these three fingers are making the A minor chord shape. Think of the A minor down here, if you were playing it up here, so that your ring finger and your pinky are on the seventh fret there. And then you're barring on the fifth fret. You just play strings five, four, three, two, and one. And then you hit the second string again, which is now that note. So we have. And then back to the A minor chord. So all together we have, and then the turnaround chord, the five chord, and I just went back to that E7 chord that I showed you in the intro, just went right into that because it's right here, it's a convenient uh, place for it. So let's take it from, And then, right back into the same uh, melody line. What's nice about this is when I play that turnaround chord, that E7 chord, my finger, fingers already, my index fingers already in position there on the fifth fret, second string. 
And I can do that same little slide like we did the first time using my index finger this time. Because it's already in that E7 chord. Same thing there. And the difference is this time the melody changes to... So let me show you that. We're going back to that F chord, that F7 chord, same chord that we did in the intro. So I'm going to go ahead and play strings 5, 4, and 3. So just remember when you play that part of the melody line, it's done with a pinky. So that's the 8th fret, 3rd string, 7th fret, 3rd string, and then we come down with the index finger to the 5th fret, 3rd string. So you have... And then we play the E7. You start with the 5th string, and then you play the rest of the chord. So, look, so backing up, we have... One more time. And then I come all the way down here and play, think of your A minor chord, if you were just playing strings two and three out of that chord. So you have. And then after that, I hit the, the fifth string, the open fifth string, the A. And strum the A minor chord one more time. And that's the whole first time through. You can see there's a lot of repetition, and the chords are pretty basic. There isn't any anything really weird there. It's just keeping the timing. That's going to be the challenge in this. Uh, and so you may want to set a metronome, set it really slow, something that you can do that you're comfortable with. Um, but once you get that going, you want to keep that right hand in motion the whole time. So just remember that. Let me back up and play the whole thing now, and that's going to conclude this video. So this one's fairly short this week. Uh, the first half. In the second half, we're going to get into the all the other stuff, all the extra. Uh, it's more of a solo in the second half. We're going to just use the structure of the song as an excuse to kind of jam a little bit. Um, but we'll cover that in part two. So here we go, from the beginning of part one. Try just looping that over and over again. Alright, we'll see you in part two.